somebody amen. amen praise the lord once again please let's celebrate uh dr clear additional let's appreciate that word in season um also i want to appreciate once again uh mama and papa in the house apostle and reverend mrs achudume we celebrate and appreciate you sir and ma for the privilege to be here god bless you and um, of course bishop god your cafe is here to explode again let's appreciate our own bishop god your cafe thank you sir god bless you I appreciate all the ministers and servants of God from different parts of Nigeria who are in this meeting this afternoon. We honor you. We celebrate all of you. Thank you for being a part of this service. Hallelujah. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hands. Oh, let the ancient words be found. Ancient words, ancient words, ever true. Oh, changing me and changing you. We have come. We be seated in his presence thank you thank you choir please let me help me celebrate these amazing amazing voices god bless you thank you exodus chapter number two Let me begin my reading from verse number one. Still on the subject before us, divine speed. Someone say divine speed. Actually, when we talk about divine speed, we're also talking about the power of accomplishment, ability, grace to accomplish much in a short time, grace to do much with little resources jesus showed up to the church in philadelphia in revelation chapter number two and said to them you have little strength but with the little strength you have you have accomplished so much you've kept the word of my patience even jesus said you have little but you've accomplished so much the little strength you have that is divine speed they were able to use little to accomplish so much divine speed the power of accomplishment and it's orchestrated by supernatural power upon the life of an individual or a ministry to accomplish much for God in a short time and there are parameters or two ways to look at it 
let's first look at the book of exodus chapter 2 and from verse number 11 exodus chapter 2 from verse 11 and um i read are you going to project it okay beautiful i don't have one here though this is not on and it came to pass in those days when moses was grown that he went out unto his brethren and looked at their burden he spied an egyptian and smiting an hebrew one of his brethren verse 12 he looked this way and that way and when he saw that there was no man he slew the egyptian and hid him in the sand he actually knew at some point that he was anointed he was called put it this way he was called to be a deliverer he knew he had a calling to emancipate god's people then you see stephen making reference to this event and stephen was saying in Acts 7 we're coming back to exodus 2 stephen was saying in Acts 7 he said in verse number 21 22 23 24 25 Acts 7 he said moses taught that they would understand that god had actually sent him for he supposed his brethren would have understood how that god by his hand would deliver them but they understood not and the next day he showed himself unto them as they strove and would have um, set them at one please give me the new king james version uh the new king james version thank you very much okay and the next day he appeared to two of them as they were fighting and trying to reconcile them saying men you are brethren why do you wrong one another but he who did his neighbor wrong pushed him away saying who made you a ruler and a judge over us do you know because that guy it takes one man one person's error to keep multitude in bondage for years whether a president whether a head of state a governor or whatever whether a leader it takes one person's error this one who did wrong pushed away moses and said do you want to kill us like you killed the egyptian and moses had that and he fled and guess what on account of this one man who did wrong who pushed moses away they stayed extra how many years extra 30 years check your bible they stayed extra 30 years let's go back to exodus 2 verse 13 you see my point in a moment so moses knew he was called moses knew he was anointed well he was called let's not talk about anointing yet he was called to deliver them he said he supposed that his brother will understand but they did not so moses assumed that if he goes and begins day after day eliminate an egyptian day after day collapse the structure of the egyptians day after day plan how he will 
cause them to escape i don't know how he planned to do it but he was at work he was planning out something but in this case moses was doing that before the anointing came upon him i did a write-up sometimes and i said moses without the anointing in 40 years in 40 years slew one egyptian and delivered no israelites then moses after the anointing came on him or put it this way when the hand of god came upon him in few days some say few days in few days he slew thousands of egyptians and delivered all the children of israel so life outside of the anointing or life outside of the supernatural hand of god produced a delivery of the slain of one egyptian in 40 years life after the hand of god came upon him he delivered the entire israelite within few days or few weeks put it that way and he slew thousands of egyptian scenario number one 40 years 40 years accomplished almost nothing killed just one egyptian the hand of god was not on him the call was there but the hand was not there he had a call but the supernatural hand of god was not yet upon him when we are talking about power of accomplishment divine speed we are talking about a situation where invisible supernatural hand comes upon a man and helps him to accomplish put it this way he accomplished accomplishes a superhuman assignment the hand of god upon moses that helped him to accomplish the task in few days or few weeks and deliver the entire israelite is what we call supernatural empowerment that helped him to perform a superhuman assignment this is a mystery yesterday i stopped at the point where elijah said to ahab he said run as fast as you can so that the rain will not stop you ahab got onto his chariot um four horsepower bmw jeep and then off he goes four horses pulling the chariots of ahab there's no human that will run or catch up with that speed elijah said run so the rain does not stop you so his entourage and protocol men kicked the car put it on high speed boom off the wind the scripture tells us they were Jezreel bound they were on their way to Jezreel the entrance of Jezreel as they left why would I would have thought Ahab would give Elijah a ride would that have made sense yes it would have made a sense a whole lot of sense everybody sees the heavens became black the heavens became dark the rains were heavy in the clouds about to pour out massively three and a half years of drought in one day the rain that has not been seen in three and a half years was about to pour down thunderstorms everywhere you could literally hear and feel the thunderstorms the blackness of the heavens and a man whom God used is saying the rain is about to stop you your excellency 
please run as fast as possible because it's a kind of rain that can sink a Prado Jeep BMW Jeep Range Rover if I was Ahab I see a man standing if I was Ahab I would have said hey your lordship bishop or apostle or prophet can my second chariot give you a ride you are asking me to go the rain is coming what happens to you but you know he didn't offer him I don't know whether you've been there you pray for others and sow seed you're a solution provider you midwife blessings and miracles but for some reasons they don't even think about you it's not a common so from the wind the sirens were blowing the the bike riders were clearing the way for the king of israel and they were running as fast as possible elijah watched as they moved there was no offer to help elijah but my bible says suddenly it was a suddenly suddenly the bible declares then the hand of the lord came upon elijah that's where i stopped last night i am trusting the lord that this supernatural hand will come on your life will come on your ministry in the name of jesus christ this supernatural hand that helps a man accomplish difficult tasks that would have taken so many years but helps a man to accomplish such task in a short time may that supernatural hand come upon you that amen is not born again may that supernatural hand come upon you in the name of jesus the hand of the lord came upon him and scripture says he outran you see and he guided up his loins and ran ahead of of ahab to the entrance of jezreel have you got the new living translation if you've got it that'll be fine so what happens here is ahab had left thank you then the lord gave special strength to elijah who is next for special strength here somebody is next for special strength say i receive it in jesus name say i receive it in jesus name the lord gave special strength he tucked his cloak into his belt and ran ahead of Ahab's chariot all the way to the entrance of Jezreel so these are my thoughts listen these are my thoughts these are my thoughts Ahab left as soon as Elijah told him they left Elijah Elijah was stranded the Lord will have me say to someone here I will not leave you stranded that's a prophetic word for someone under the sound of my voice I will not leave you stranded the Lord says I said to you help is coming for you those you helped may have left you those you helped may not even regard those you helped may not have even reciprocated but thus saith the Lord help is coming for you the Bible says and the special strength of God came upon Elijah special strength special strength I call it supernatural empowerment that helps a man to execute a superhuman assignment that's the power that grants divine accomplishment divine speed unusual breakthroughs what should have taken you years god helps you to accomplish in weeks say i believe it and that special strength is coming upon you today in the name of jesus christ it was that same hand that came upon philip in the 
wilderness when the Ethiopian eunuch was on his way this was a chief uh, financial uh, 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 minister of finance in Ethiopia the Bible says he was in charge of the treasury of the Queen Candice she he was in charge of the treasury he was by no means a small man he had entourage of vehicles he had the fastest moving vehicle he was in his chariot moving and going back to um, Ethiopia in Acts 8 then the Spirit of the Lord said to Philip he said go join yourself join yourself someone said join those who left you behind not only will you catch up with them you will overtake them your amen is over I say you will overtake them in the mighty name of Jesus he says join yourself to that chariot and Philip ran after the chariot you think it was normal strength anybody thinks that there was normal strength no the chariot of the Ethiopia eunuch was moving at its own speed it was going to be days of travel they were passing through a wilderness and he was going at his own speed then the spirit said to Philip go near overtake this chariot go near with my legs naturally speaking who runs faster chariot or humans chariot but if the Holy Ghost and that brings me to say when God commands an assignment he will give special strength the Holy Ghost commanded his assignment he commanded the assignment go near go near overtake and you are still asking but I am only having legs he's having to mm, keep quiet you take a step of faith go near overtake and Philip did not question you know what Philip did he he, he, he acted on faith and before we knew it this the same supernatural hand that came upon Elijah came on Philip I hope you know that that was what happened to Philip as well he came on Philip and the Bible says he ran supernaturally he ran caught up with the chariot of the Ethiopian eunuch amazing the man shows up and says do you understand what you are reading he said how can I unless someone interprets to me it is my thinking that when the Ethiopia you know got back to Ethiopia he would have said to his people an angel appeared to me that's what he would have said an angel appeared to me they said how do you know it's an angel I was on top speed of my chariot and uh, suddenly the guy showed up by my side and was running at the same speed of the chariot and he began to ask me question and then we had to pull over and he had to speak to me the Ethiopian eunuch would have gone to say an angel showed up but we you and I who read this know that it was God's supernatural hand special strength that came upon Philip and I am trusting the Lord before this conference is over supernatural hand of God special strength will come upon you you will accomplish much in a short time I think you are you are not here are you still here I say you will accomplish much in a short time you will accomplish much in a short time by the hand of Jehovah God say amen three times amen supernatural you will continue to struggle and go with what we call the pace of natural event unless you ask for this supernatural special strength it's an open thing for those who want to go with the pace of life naturally that's fine God will honor it for those who are saying well uh, let me just follow leave me at this at the rate leave me at this speed I'm okay with this speed that's fine God will have respect for you but for those who are saying Lord after the order of Elijah after the order of the Ethiopian eunuch I want speed in my life and ministry 
take me out of where I am now help me to accomplish so much in a short time God will honor it I say God will honor it I say God will honor it in the name of Jesus if you look at the the book of Acts of Apostles chapter we're coming back to Exodus chapter number um, uh, 2 where I'm going to finish up from that's where we started from if you look at the book of uh, uh, Acts chapter 19 and you read from verse 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 Paul gets into a place called Ephesus and it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul having passed through the upper region came to Ephesus and finding some disciples finding some disciples note those words he said to them did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed between verse 1 and verse 2 I have a conviction that it was a few days verse 1 says he found some disciples then when he found them he was actually looking for them in Ephesus because Ephesus was the domain of Apollos when you get back check Acts chapter 18 Ephesus was the domain of Apollos Apollos was in Ephesus and he did some work in Ephesus and don't forget Apollos only had the baptism of John Apollos never had the baptism of the Holy Ghost until until uh, Aquila and Priscilla called him and expanded to him the, 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 the way of the Lord more perfectly he was zealous but he had no baptism of the Holy Ghost so Apollos was the one who was a missionary so Ephesus so there was a pulpit swap Paul now went to Ephesus Apollos went to Corinth please note that Paul went to Ephesus Apollos went to Corinth so Apollos says to Paul that's my thinking I've done missions work in Ephesus there are disciples there people are saved in Ephesus Paul got to Ephesus he's looking for the churches or the disciples he couldn't find any finally he found 12 disciples so he asked him a profound question after days of search he said now this was for me this was a bit embarrassing he said to them finding them the first thing he asked them he said sorry I don't mean to embarrass you did you receive the Holy Ghost where you believed now let me add mine because if you receive the Holy Ghost when you believed and the Holy Ghost the supernatural hand of God is upon your lives and I hear you guys have been here for many years how come only 12 of you are saved for several years how come the work is slow the progress is a snail speed that's interpretation have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe then they responded and said we have not even heard whether there's a Holy Ghost <laughs> we have not even heard whether there's a Holy Ghost really how do you want to accomplish the task how do you want to execute this superhuman assignment you want to reach the entire Ephesus you want to demolish the idols of goddess Diana you want to destroy the images and the monuments of, of the, the, the idolatrous worship of Asia Ephesus was the capital of Asia 
Minor Asia in those days. Ephesus, Ephesus was a place where the magnificent temple of the goddess Diana was situated. As Mecca is to Islam and probably Rome is to the Catholics, you know, and Jerusalem is to Orthodox Christians and etc. So was Ephesus to idol worshippers in those days. Every idol worshiper went to Ephesus. These disciples have been there for many years doing missions work without 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 the Holy Ghost. So in so many years only 12 people were saved. Look at that progress. So in the next 50 years probably 24 or 36 people will be saved and some of those who even evangelizing would have died so what did Paul do the principle we're coming back to Moses the principle don't forget Moses outside of the supernatural hand of God he was able to kill how many Egyptians in 40 years how many one and he delivered how many Israelites in 40 years? Talk to me. None. But after he had encounter with the burning bush, which is a prototype of baptism of the Holy Ghost. After he had encounter with the burning bush, which is a prototype of the supernatural hand of God. Don't worry. After he had encounter with the burning bush, which is a symbol of the supernatural hand of God as he came on Elijah, in few days or at most few weeks, he delivered the entire Israel and slew thousands of Egyptians. That was supernatural. That is what we call divine speed, power of accomplishment, ability to do much in a short time. It can happen outside of the Holy Ghost. It can happen outside of the supernatural hand of God. So Paul says to them, he said them that he said, Oh God, which baptism did you receive? Verse three, verse 3. Which baptism did you receive? They said, Baptism of John. Eh? Baptism of John unto repentance. This this these are my thoughts. I, I, I seem to hear Paul saying to them, that one has expired. <laughs> baptism of John. Baptism of John. In other words, baptism of John cannot deal with what the issues on ground here. We're talking about we have so much to do in a short time. We need speed to accomplish much. Baptism of John. He shook his head. He said, no wonder. He said, baptism of John was a symbol of repentance. And that was then, before the Holy Ghost came, before the official announcement and introduction of the Holy Ghost into the earth, that was then. Then verse 5. Hallelujah. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And verse 6, let's read verse 6. The Bible says, And when Paul, when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost did what? The Holy Ghost came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Then what amazed me is in verse 9 and 10. Go to verse 9 and 10. And Okay, verse 7 said they were about 12. Everybody said 12. Say it again. Say it again. All right. Go to verse 10. Verse 10. Let's go. Can we read together? Verse 10. Everybody read verse 10. One to go. Within how many years? Within two years. Everyone in Asia not just Ephesus 
Ephesus was the capital of Asia. Everyone in Asia, that includes Laodicea, that includes Thyatira, that includes Pagamos, that includes Philadelphia. The seven churches of Asia were born out of these 12 disciples that Paul laid hands on and the Holy Ghost came on them and the work exploded in two years. In two years. Yes, sir. Asia, not just Ephesus. Asia. That was why when Jesus showed up in Revelation, what was the first church he addressed? Who was the first church? Ephesus. Ephesus. He says, right to the seven churches of Asia. He began with Ephesus. That was the capital. That was where the revival started. That was where the special strength, supernatural hand of God came for divine speed. Somebody under the sound of my voice, that hand is coming upon you today. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will accomplish much in a short time. God will give you the power of accomplishment. In the mighty name of Jesus, lift your hands and shout hallelujah. <laughs> We're about to pray. By the time you get to verse 14, 15, 16, 17, down to verse 19 of the same Acts 19, you see the revival that took place. Anchor chiefs and apron from Paul's body from verse 11, 12. God did unusual miracles through the hands of Paul. Anchor in the apron. By verse 14, 15, seven sons of Sceva, those who practice idolatry, exorcism, they were exposed and disgraced. By verse 19, 20, 21, the Bible tells us those who practice magics and sorcery and curious arts, they brought their magic books and the prize was what? 50,000 pieces of silver. Or put it this way, it was what? Over 10 million to 20 million US dollars. That means... Each family in Asia or Ephesus had a magic book. Each family. Some guys were there for years. Who mentored them? Apollos. Who led them to Christ? Apollos. Which baptism did they receive? John's baptism. How long were they there? Many years. How many souls did they save? Only 12. Paul gets there and said, you can't continue like this. No, you can't continue like this. No, you can't continue like this. That's what we call divine speed. That's what we call divine acceleration. And to come to the supernatural hand of God. Please stand on your feet as we read Exodus. Go back to Exodus where we pray please stand on your feet hallelujah because i'm watching my time right now stand on your feet as read exodus is anybody blessed here the supernatural hand of god supernatural hand of god supernatural hand of god enduring success in ministry in life in business supernatural hand of god not gimmicks not gimmicks accomplishments powered by the holy ghost not gimmicks verse 13 exodus 2 we're about to pray in a moment verse 13 exodus 2 and when he went the second day okay we've read that the guy pushed him away verse number 14 verse 14 please and he said who made you a prince and a judge over us you intend to kill me new king james version you intend to kill me as you killed the egyptian and moses feared and said surely this thing is known and then verse number 15 now the priest of midian when Pharaoh heard of this matter, he sought to kill Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. And he sat down by a well. Ever says, sat down. He sat down by a well. 
and i'll tell you what he was thinking when he sat down by the well he was saying to himself he said i will no longer help i will i made a mistake he was saying to himself he said i've made a mistake how could i have done that now i'm living by the well side in the wilderness no accommodation now i'm living by well side a man who came from a palace is not living by the well side a man who had palace protocol is not living by the well side you know what he attempted to do the work outside of the supernatural hand of god outside of the power of the holy ghost and so for 40 years it will be in median accomplishing nothing he had the call he had the call he had the zeal he had a good intention but the supernatural hand of god was not on him at the time yet He said no more i'm helping no one again i will never be involved in voluntary help anymore he said no more and as he sat by that well guess what happened seven young ladies came to fetch water hey, seven young ladies came to fetch water thank you sir seven young ladies shepherdesses they came to fetch water now the priest of media had seven daughters and they came and drew water and they filled the troughs to water their father's flock verse number 17 then the shepherds came and drove them away and there was a pause watch this the shepherds came bullied them away and drove them away and there was a pause then then moses was sitting down watching the movie like um pastor our our doctor additional said moses was watching the movie and en and enjoying the movie and something in him the, the moses in him the way god wired him was saying go and help those girls moses said no not again i did it before see where i landed myself not again somebody's hearing my voice now you have helped people before they decide it brought you into trouble and then it's killing what god wired in you you are wired to be a helper of destiny you are wired to to be one with a large heart but you've suffered some very treacherous experience you've suffered some damaging experience and you made up your mind you will never stretch out your hands to help people again i have a word for you today please keep into the way god has wired you be yourself come out of it be yourself he said i'm not going to help anymore so he sat down there was ruminating and the shepherds were beating the girls get out I said, they were kicking the girls i said get out and moses was sitting there he said no way i wouldn't do that anymore that's why i found myself here suddenly ever said suddenly the moses in him the deliverer in him the deliverer in him woke up the deliverer in him got up he was aroused and he got up as he got up he went straight for the shepherds he i'm straight them and beat them up and broke their bones help the girls they fetch the water now hear this hear this i have a word for you i have a word for you i have a word for you don't let people redefine you don't let people's attitude redefine your character they say to the riba i tell you he never used to be like this people taught him a lesson people taught her a lesson he used to be a very nice person he never used to be like this. but people changed him don't let people change you don't let people fabricate you don't let people change the design god made you to be can i hear amen somebody he got up help the girls the girls got back home and this is where i'm closing this the girls got back home and they came to their father what did your father say what was the question everybody echo the question their father asked one to go i will say that you have come so soon today by the time you leave this meeting people will be asking you the question how come you are what used to take you a whole day to accomplish how come you are accomplishing it accomplishing it in a short time we are seeing the struggles are over now how come you came home so soon today how come you came home so soon today apostle our apostle mentioned something strategic I'm, I'm taking that as prayer point for the rest of the week probably for the rest of the month 
he said may God not to just send people who will pity you and sympathize with you but people who have capacity Moses had the capacity <laughs> Moses had the capacity somebody say capacity oh God send you men with capacity Moses had the capacity he had the capacity to help those girls accomplish much in a short time their father their father said how come you came home so soon today this is too quick this is fast this is speed this is speed you will normally return in the evening I was expecting you in the evening but you returned at 12 noon we were expecting this to happen but to our surprise there are ministers under the sound of my voice as you go back your ministry will experience a paradigm shift in the mighty name of Jesus Christ people will ask you question how come you got this done so quickly so soon an Egyptian helped us why did you leave him behind call him to eat bread bread became one accommodation two wife three a big agricultural business four school of ministry and mentorship from bread to four major breakthroughs one accommodation two wife three business breakthrough four ministry mentorship be yourself that's where your destiny lies go ahead and thank him and give him praise give him praise give him praise thank you sir can you please celebrate evangelist Shita Gwega give me a big big hand celebrate him wow what a word can you celebrate him please celebrate him please celebrate him celebrate him what a word what a word what a word are you blessed today in the two sessions are you blessed are you blessed today wow well um i won't talk let's welcome reverend for give a big hand as he's coming please celebrate as he comes please